Andrew King is, is maybe the smartest football player I've ever been around in the football field. And then he's a, a very physical, terminating tackler. Our younger kids, when they see him and they see how hard he practices and how he likes practice, they don't really have an option. If they're not practicing at the level he wants, he'll handle it for us. I just want to help our team win. That comes with sacrifice and preparation. No one can teach you effort. That's between you and you. We take a bus everywhere, right? We, we bus to the airport to fly. We bus to the hotel for home games. And he'd always be the last kid on the bus. And he'd go to the back, and he'd walk to the front. And I'd be like, what are you doing? And you know, he, he's checking to make sure nobody forgets anything, make sure there's no trash left on the bus. He goes through the locker room to make sure that the locker room is set like we need it to be. He's checking to make sure everybody is done what they're supposed to do. We're held to a higher standard, so I'm gonna hold my teammates to a higher standard. And if they leave something dirty, I'm gonna clean it up myself. I mean, I'm gonna tell them about it, but I'm gonna clean it up myself. And this is just a, a, the definition of sermon leader. My dad definitely gave a great example of that, you know, that selfless service. He's lieutenant command detective in the New York City crime scene unit. There were things that I saw growing up that I was like, you know what? I wish a cop was here. I wish somebody was there to help. Um, I also remember running into police officers that weren't so helpful. I said I would never be that guy. And when I became a supervisor, I wanted to make sure that my cops were not that guy. I said, because when you took this job, you took this to help people, okay? And sometimes it's hard. His part in 9-11 in being a first responder, he never really like talks about it that much. He's pretty humble. I was assigned out to the Staten Island landfill because all the debris had to go somewhere, so that's where they put it. I get chills just thinking about it right now. They would put all the stuff on a uh, conveyor belt, and we would look through it, just trying to find something. It could be a shoe, uh, an ID. Uh, we were looking for, uh, how can I say, um, pieces of people. And so then once they were able to identify them through DNA, then they had a piece of their loved one who they, who they can bury to get some kind of closure. I think it speaks to his character and to put yourself, put yourself in, in, in the victim's shoes. That's just so selfless and, and it's very inspiring. Seeing that the selfless service from my dad and the sacrifices he made, you know, I wanted to be making those same sacrifices. I requested infantry and I got that. That's what he wants to do. He, he wants to be that guy, the boots on the ground. He wants to lead men and women in, into battle. That's basically what patrol is. Those are the guys that are going into domestic violence, they're going to uh, gun runs, um, whatever it is. You know, you're the front lines, you're the first on the scene. We're not really worried about ourselves, but helping the country because we're servants of the nation, essentially.